What's going on guys? I'm back and uh, in this video I'm going to be going over the five things that I like about my Mark III Supra. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm not in the car, uh, I have information on that on my previous video about the dislikes, uh, so if you haven't watched that yet, jump over there real quick because I'm kind of going to be throwing a few things from that video into this one. Uh, and I, you don't need to watch it first. Uh, however, I feel like to get the full gist of the things, we'll definitely want to at least skim through that one and watch a majority of it to get a basic idea before watching this one. <clears throat> so, with that being said, let's jump right into it. First, like, of the Mark III uh, is the 7M. Now... Uh, in my previous video, I said I disliked the stock 7M and described some of the problems with it. Uh, not personal problems that I have had with it, but just in general problems that people have had with them. Um, and in that video, I did specifically talk about how in their stock platform, they're not a great engine. However, they have really, really solid potential once you do the necessary upgrades to make them reliable. Um, that being head gasket, uh, some of them, I believe, had oil leaking problems. Forget where, either up by the uh, valve seals or the valve cover or uh, one of the, I think it was the rear main, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Um, was one of the two had oil leaks <coughs> and oh loss of oil pressure that was another one too because of the uh, ill uh, faded of the uh, oil pump but uh, yes the so the 7M as a whole is a really good engine it can take a lot of power uh, I know there's a few 7Ms out there that are running 1,000 horsepower plus. No problems. However, they have done the necessary upgrades to make the engines able to handle that much power. Uh, once you do that, pretty much sky's the limit until you need to go to a billet counterpart. Biggest reason why I like the 7M is it wasn't as it, 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 the engine was overbuilt from the factory. Number two is the feel of the car. So, um, those of you who have seen a pretty stock or even a lightly modified Mark III interior, you know that it's decently luxurious. Uh, obviously, the dash is very nice looking, soft, uh, in at least the, in the pristine cars like mine, you know, dash is super clean, uh, all the gauges and everything are all tilted towards the driver, uh, seats, they had leather option back then, uh, lumbar, lumbar bladder that was automatic in the driver's seat, um, power windows, power mirrors, um, power locks, that was another big thing. Yeah, the eight-way adjustable driver's seat that had the side bolstering that you could adjust. Uh, it was forward, back. Uh, the seat itself in the back does tip up and down. So if you want a more race feel, you can drop that seat down and it... Uh, obviously, you're going to sit deeper in the bolstering. Uh, in the, you're going to sit deeper in the side bolstering. And just going to feel a lot tighter, hugged in the car. Um, a lot of the cars did have the automatic suspension, uh, mine does not, uh, but just a lot of advanced features for 1989 period that, you know, that general area of, uh, time. There was a lot of, quite a bit of, uh, advanced features in those cars for that period of time, and... Most of them were standard, which another thing is 
unheard of in that time. So you get in and you feel like you're in a very aged uh, and luxurious car. But yet you get out and look at it and it's a sports car. So I guess you could say it's kind of like the mullet of sports cars, you know. It uh, looks aggressive outside, but then once you get inside, it's elegant, um, very luxurious. You know, you have all the features there for the creature comfort of driving. Uh, definitely a very well-built GT car for going out on, and built for going on long drives if so needed to. And having a bit of, be, being able to have a bit of fun along the way. Um... <clears throat> Number three, I would say. Number three, I would say is the the drivetrain. Um, going back to kind of like the engine, obviously, good engine. Once you do the necessary upgrades to it, like the head gasket and anything else, there's problems with. It's a fine running engine. After that, you just need a little bit of aftermarket touch to it to get it to run decently and be very reliable for going on long drives or trips or uh, just the overall longevity of driving the car, period. Um, suspension in the car, pretty good. Uh, double wishbone, uh, definitely it took into account cornering. Uh, the overall feel of steering is very tight. You turn that wheel, those wheels are going to turn pretty much with the steering wheel. So it is a very tight uh, feeling car. Uh, just hugs corners. Uh, I know with my dad living out in the country roads, uh, where the car is actually being stored right now uh, for the winter, <clears throat> the the county roads out there are very curvy hills. It, it's a very fun car to just go out and drive in uh, and take those county roads a little faster than a normal vehicle, and it's it's just a lot of fun. I there's. I don't think another car I could think of other than maybe a newer Supra to compare the two. Uh, Mark IV or even a Mark V even uh, to compare, you know, feeling for the steering and everything. So, um, but yeah, that combined with the power of the 7M and all the potential it has, uh, the double wishbone suspension, just a very, very well put together car drivetrain wise. Uh, number four, target top. So the target top is, I'm sure as you guys have probably read somewhere, there is an article about a, uh, that a, some guy had written. Uh, it's like five or ten reasons as to why the Mark III Supra sucks. Um, not really a big fan of that. There are a lot of misconceptions written within that article that I don't agree with being a car or being a owner of one of those cars. I kind of understand where the guy was coming from though, so I can't hate on him too much because yes, he does mention the 7M with the head gasket problems, but again, aftermarket fix. After that, no problems. Uh, but the overall benefit of being able to take the roof off anytime you want is just perfect. Cruising through town on either a warm spring or fall day or just cruising on a warm summer night is perfect. I, I can't, there's nothing better that I can think of than just lazily cruising through town or taking the interstate with the top down, you know pretty much got the luxury of a convertible without uh, the full back being exposed and open and everything. It's just the top, so you can stick your hands up, you know, as a passenger. Um, get, a, get a couple handfuls full of bugs if it's in the summertime, or even just out on a nice day, kind of like today. Uh, just out cruising, you know, take it off. Couple bolts, four bolts, whole thing pops off, you know, starts to rain, pull over, set the top on, get back in the car, roll the windows up, and then you can tighten it all back down from the inside, take back off. Um, 
I haven't taken the top off too much, but the times that I have, I've really enjoyed it. And wish that it wasn't so hot the next few days so I could just leave it off and enjoy it more. But uh, I think that's definitely going to be something that I uh, look forward to. Uh, hopefully now that spring's rolling around, I'll be able to do that more um, once I get it back down here to where I live. Uh, number five, I just love the whole car in its entirety. Uh, it's not a big attention getter, at least around here it's not. Um, but you know, that's okay. It's, it's one of those cars that I'm still very conscious about, uh, driving to public places and leaving sit in an open parking lot for extended periods of time. Uh, because again, it's something that, uh... I have loved for several years before I bought it, and I've loved it for the last couple of years since I bought it. Um, I have no regrets whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to be a car that I'm ever going to sell. Uh, I just enjoy it way too much, and for me, it's one of those cars that you can't really get sick of personally uh, it's just such an oddity you don't see too many of them around here uh, before I bought mine there was a red one my same body style that was uh, actually passed me as I was on my way to work one day uh, when I was still in high school and I saw it and that wasn't too long after I saw the video that that dude in blue did about the Mark III being, uh, what was the title of that video? Not underdog, but underappreciated, basically. Um, but yeah, I watched that video and saw it, and that's kind of what sparked my interest in a Mark III. Uh, of course, I was expecting the 1J in the car, not the 7M, but I'm, I'm working with the 7M, and granted that I do have the opportunity, now that I own the car, to change it, am I going to? No, no, not, not at all. Um, just that engine has so much potential, I've seen what other people have done with it, and I want to take full advantage of the power uh, potential out of it, the sound, everything. The, the whole car as a whole. I want to drive it as its whole. Numbers matching and keep the interior looking as stock as possible. You know, minimal gauges, add very few gauges, uh, none, hopefully. And so that way it's kind of like a sleeper. You know, you pop the hood and you got bigger turbo, uh, upgraded engine to handle the power, uh, probably an upgraded trans, but you can't see any of that from the outside. I want to keep it looking period correct without all the modern stuff on the inside and just making it feel like a, a race car. You know, I, I, want, a, I want a street car. You, uh, as few gauges as possible, uh, if any, preferably. Um, but yeah, those are the five things that I love about my Mark III. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, if you like content like this, uh, feel free to drop a like. And also, if you have any questions or anything, uh, comment sections right down below, right down there. Also, uh, feel free to ask me any questions, uh, concerns, anything. Uh, leave it in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Uh, that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Noah, signing out. I'll see you in the next one.